you might want to make a copy of the video clip first there before I have a chance to kind of edit out certain sections, right? <laughs> All right. So now we're almost done. We are down to the last one. Post 4. Post 4 equals to pre 3 for the same reason as before, so I'm not going to mention anything. <clears throat> Oh, pre, sorry. Pre 4 equals post 3. Sorry about that. Okay. But this time I cannot just say, oh, we'll use the same rule just like before. Right? Because if you look at the rules, hey, it's not quite the same anymore. So now you have to say, oh, line 4 is a little bit different. So the, the, re the rationale or the reason or what you have to explain is going to be different. The right hand side of the assignment of line 4 does refer to the left hand side. Okay, that's the first step. If the right hand side refers to the left hand side, then you have to look at the right hand side and say, can I undo it? Is it an undoable thing? Does it have an inverse function? So the next step is to say the right hand side function of line 4 does have an inverse. Okay. So you will basically say the right hand side function, and you have to say what it is, f of x or f of y in this case equals to y plus x. That's the function. And what do you think is the inverse in this case? It will be f prime of y equals to y minus x. Okay. So it is true that x is an unknown just like y. But in this case, it is a function of y, so we are treating x pretty much like a constant at this point. So are we OK with this step? The right-hand side refers to the left-hand side, and it is reversible. It has an inverse. So because it has an inverse, we can apply the substitution rule. So the next step is to illustrate you know, how is the substitution rule going to be applied. You say post 4 is based on the substitution operation on pre 4. What are we looking what are we looking for? What are we searching for? We're searching for the variable on the left hand side. So in this case on line 4, the left the variable on the left hand side is y. Very good. And we are repla replacing it with what? f prime of y, okay? So the important part is make sure this is just pre-4 and do not just you know, put in the condition in place of pre-4. Um, do not use the inverse function. Expand, do not expand it here because I want to see to know that people know that we're supposed to use the inverse function. Now, this can actually help you. Is it hard to say that you know we are applying the inverse function f prime of y, g prime of x, and so on and so forth. Not too hard, okay? You know, the prime in this class means the inverse of a function. So as long as you remember it is the inverse of something, you will just remember, okay, I better put a prime there. But if you copy the wrong function, if you copy y plus x here instead of y minus x here, then you will get no points at all. After this step, when you expand it and you expand it wrong, you will still get partial credit. Because the most important step is to understand that you have to use the inverse function, not the function itself. So when you copy wrong, you know, when you expand the equation, I will take uh, some partial credit away, but it won't be as much as you know, missing this line, which is the definition or what is this is this is the rule itself. So the next line is just gonna expand everything. What is pre four? Pre four is post three and post three is just x equals to three. We're replacing all occurrences of y with, in this case, you can expand it to become y minus x. Um, does x equals 3 mention anything about y? No. So would the substitution have anything to do? No. Nope. So we end up with this again. In other words, we have lost track of the value of y at this point. But that's fine. It's based on everything that we have talked about in the class. In other words, if someone understands you know, intuitively how this algorithm works, but could not apply the rules, 
and mention right here and say and y equals six, I would actually mark, uh, I would actually re, you know, take points off. But why, why do you think I'm going to take points off even though the answer is right? It means that person did not really <coughs> understand the rules or the mechanism of deriving the answer. Okay, in this case, it's easy. Okay, in this case, you can just trace the code and get to the answer, no problem. Okay, but in some other cases, you cannot do that. You cannot, the whole point of going through the mathematics instead of tracing is it will, work, it will work even if you don't know anything specific about the variables. Okay, so that is why it is more important to show the steps than getting the correct results. If someone make a mistake early on, like if someone makes a mistake here and for some reason put in x equals six, okay, and consistently use x equals six throughout the derivation, I will only take the points off once, okay? Because that person, you know, if, if everything else works consistently, and just you know having this little mistake here, x equals six, and use x equals six consistently. That means that person made a simple mistake early on, but everything else is still fine. So that person will actually still get most of the points associated with this question. Okay, are you guys understanding you know, the way I, I will be grading this? Okay, very good. <clears throat> so the rationale and the steps are more important than the correct results. Okay, the mechanical steps, we can all make mistakes. So that is less important. This is all based on, you know, we, 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 you know, when you guys become teachers, you will know. When you become a teacher, you will assign, you know, points and, you know, have your grading policy based on your own experience as a student. <laughs> when I was a student, when I took linear algebra, you know, we were asked to inverse, you know, invert uh, matrices. Okay, you have to find the inverse of matrices. And that's back in the good old days where calculators cannot really do all that stuff. You know, we, when we take calculus classes, we actually have to do all the derivations you know, by hand because calculators could not do symbolic um, uh, integration or differentiation. And it is really easy to make one little mistake when you invert, in, is it called inverting a, a matrix? When you invert a matrix, it's all you know, doing you know, division and multiplication, additions and subtractions, it's all arithmetic. But it's easy to make one single mistake in one little step and then your matrix doesn't look right anymore after that step, okay? But should I get all the points you know, re, you know, deducted because my answer was wrong? Probably not, okay? If I made one single little mistake, you know, I should not have all the points you know, deducted. You know, I should have some points deducted, but not all the points. So that's why I'm grading it you know, this way, because I, I'm focusing more on do you know how to do it as opposed to do you know the final result? Because the final result sometimes is really easy to get to. Your calculator can help you with that. Well, in math classes anyway. So, do we have any questions at this point? Yep. <clears throat> that is the final answer, yes. It does say, you know, post four equals blah, 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 and sub the, sub the result of the substitution Add up with that. Now, if we did keep track of y equals to six, you know, we, if we did, you know, use that one step, we would actually end up with uh, y equals to nine at this point. In other words, by missing that opportunity to keep track of y independent, you know, of x, um, this answer is not wrong because we know for sure that after line four executes, x does equals to three. But the answer in this case is less specific than it could have been. So it is still a correct answer, it is just not as good as a correct answer as also stating that y would equal to nine. Okay, are there any questions about the answer to this question? No. Is it consistent with what we talked about in the class? Okay, step by step, pretty much the same. And you guys don't have to use exactly the same phrases or the same words, you know, as long as I understand your rationale, it is just as good. Any questions at this point? Questions? Now, I will also ask you questions that are, that requires you to understand enough of the material we have talked about so far, 
but the type of the question may not be something that you have seen already. In other words, I can give you something like this. I can say, okay, this is question number three. What is the original value of x given that post two is stating that x equals to, oh, I don't know, 30, okay? So we start with a post condition of two lines of pseudocode. And you have to tell me what was the original value of x before these two lines, okay? <clears throat> so this is something that we have not seen, but the answer, to derive the answer, you have to basically apply the same stuff that we have talked about in the class. So we'll, in this case, I will just say that line one is x gets x plus one, and line two says x gets x times five. Okay. Hmm? It says x asterisk five. The asterisk symbol represents multiplication. Oh, minus? Oh, I said minus? It's multiplied. I said multiply? Okay. I could not remember. The, the recording is still going on, you know, but I don't have a TiVo mechanism. I cannot instantly go back, you know, I cannot time warp, you know, back like just five seconds. So, you know, I can work on that. <clears throat> hmm? X times five. Yeah, this is X times five. Yep. Okay. So, how would you use what we have learned so far to go back and you know reverse the operation and say, oh, that means x you know had a value of blah 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 in pre one. Okay, what is the original value of x? And I will say in pre one, given that post two is just saying that x does equal to thirty. Now we know what it is, right? Because you guys can probably just eyeball it and say, well, let's see, we can reverse one operation one at a time. X equals to 30 after line two executes. What does line two do? Line two multiplies X by five. So that means, you know, before line two executes, X must have a value of six. six. Now that's the same as post one. So if post one is X has a value of six and all line one did was to add one to X, then X must have a value of five before line one. Okay, so that's all you know, reasoning, and it's good reasoning too. In this case, if you give me that much, it's already good. Okay, I don't need you to give me you know, all the rigorous math and whatnot, because we have not really gone through these exercises in the class. But you still have to explain to me why you think x equals five is the precondition of line one. Okay, in other words, the answer is pre one is x equals five. But if someone just gives me this much, it will get just a little bit of the uh, full credit of this question, because I want people to explain why, okay? Now, you don't have to use the pre and post conditions all the way to explain it, which is actually not a bad idea, okay? But you can always explain it using, you know, more or less, you know, just colloquial terms, you know, just use English sentences, such as, you know, what I just said, since we know after line two x has a, has a value of 30 and all line two does is to multiply the value of x by five, we can say that x should start with a value of six before line two executes. Now because line two connects to line one, we also know that after line one, x has to have a value of six. But what does line one do? All it does is to add one to x. So if after adding one to x, x has a value of six, that must mean before adding one, x had a value of five. So you can just say, you can just say that, you know, in, you know, write it out in English. Or you can do, you know, the pre and post condition thing. Does anyone want to see the pre post condition solution to the whole thing? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the pre post 